particularly in networking R&D for US CMS. Uh, this is the outline which I am going to present today, uh, starting with the overview of CMS and US CMS, and then uh, discuss something about the High Lumia LHC and the data challenges and networking R&D efforts for, at the Fermi and our WAN connectivity transition up to you know 2.4 terabits. So let's start with the overview of uh, CMS and the US CMS. If we talk about the CMS, uh, CMS is basically, I think you all know about uh, the high energy physics experiments. And one of them is the CMS. And the purpose of CMS is uh, to study the proton to proton collision at the sun's LHC, uh, you know, large hydron collider. So you can see the detector in the right side of the picture, CMS detector, which is detecting the proton to proton collisions and recording the data. And that data is basically, you know, transmitted, uh, or, you know, worldwide for the physics analysis. Over 200 institutes from 57 countries and more than 3,300 physicists are basically part of this experiment. And if you're familiar with the, you know, the LHC tier architecture, uh, CMS itself having, you know, worldwide seven tier one sites and more than 50 tier two sites. And uh, the CMS compute needs are basically covered by using the WLCG grid uh, resources, which is basically the global collaboration of more than 170 computing centers and approximately uh, you can say more than 1 million CPU cores it is providing and more than one exabyte of storage, including the disk and tape. So this is all about the CMS. And if I talk about the US CMS, uh, where I'm working here as a networking R&D part, particularly for US CMS, for me, is the one of the largest tier one center uh, here in US uh, for the CMS experiment, along with the seven, you know, the tier two sites. And the purpose of the Fermi is to enable the US physicists to take the, you know, the leadership role in in the phys in the physics world, particularly in the CMS. So. Uh, if we talk about the CMS experiment and other LSC experiment like Atlas, Alice, and the LSCB, so the current time that you know the, at the current stage we can say we are currently in the LSC era, but in future, um, in 2029, we will have the new era which is called the High Lumi LSC era. What is the High Lumi LSC era? I will discuss that, but uh, it is the uh, you know changing the dynamics of the scientific workflows. So for the, you know, to enable the high Lumi LHC era and, you know, to, to you know, uh, cop up the challenges of high Lumi LHC era, there are lots of lots of R&D efforts for CMS in the scientific community is ongoing. And we also working at Fermi lab for US CMS, some, you know, efforts, but particularly I'm working in the networking field. So therefore we are working on the R&D efforts of the networking related. So which I will discuss later. So what is the High Lumi LHC? Uh, whenever we are talking about uh, the High Lumi LHC, this is basically the next phase of the science harvest at CERN, which will start in 2029. And for CMS, particularly for CMS experiment, it is going to generate the huge amount of data uh, by 2029. You can compare in this right side table uh, that how many the number of collisions today we have around 9 billion but in the era of high Lumi LFC it will be it will become you know 56 billion. Similarly the total per year petabyte of storage uh, data that will be generated uh, currently we are generating around 20 petabytes of data yearly, but in high Lumi LHC era, we will have 600, uh, you know, petabytes of data per year. So that will be huge. You know, you can see, uh, 
20 times or 30 times more than you know the, today's. So uh, to fulfill these requirements, uh, we need to you know expand or upgrade our infrastructures for particularly for the scientific workflows. So for that, uh, scientific community designed you know some data challenges events. And the purpose of those data challenge events are to demonstrate the capability of infrastructure. Infrastructure means the compute infrastructure, storage infrastructure, and the network infrastructure. And these data challenges are basically the scaling challenges that how much scalable your infrastructure is uh, to transfer, to, de to demonstrate the transfer of the data from storage to storage, production data. So every year they, uh, you know, set up some targets. You can see in the right side in the bottom uh, table, uh, I show here the Fermi's target where we have to upgrade our link, uh, you know, for every data challenge, we have to upgrade our link at least whatever the target is given in this table. So in the last DC24, uh, we have to upgrade 200 GBPS link uh, you know, through which they can demonstrate the data transfer from CERN and other tier ones and tier twos, uh, uh, you know, they can engage and they can utilize this link for the data. So uh, on top of that, this is a WLCG collective graph, cumulative graph, uh, where you can see in March 2024, we had the data challenges. And uh, you can see that uh, collectively, all the experiments are achieving more than 300 gigabytes per second, uh, you know, on the throughput you can see. So this is, uh, we can imagine how big it will be in future high Lumia LHC era. So uh, next, the data challenge, which will be, you know, scheduled in 2026, and we have to reach around the 60% of the target, that is basically the 400 uh, GBPS link we should have, and we have to demonstrate the more data should be transferred in that, uh, in that uh, you know, DC26. Uh, as I said, the Hilumi LSC era will be, you know, uh, you know, huge. So for that, uh, there are a number of R&D efforts in the scientific communities are ongoing. Uh, including in the storage, compute, and network technologies. Some peoples are working on data management softwares like Rusio and data transfer services and software like FTS and XUD. Uh, at Fermi, we are also working on these things as well. Uh, storage technologies like Dcache and EOS and networking. Uh, because I am working particularly in the networking R&D, so I'll emphasize on my, you know, projects, which, which I'm going to discuss here, whatever the R&D efforts we have here at Fermi lab for particularly for the high Lumi LSC networking. So if we talk about the networking requirements for high Lumi LHC and networking infrastructure requirements, uh, if we discuss today's era and we see the scientific workflows, they are looking network as a, you know, just an opaque infrastructure and uh, scientific peoples are just injecting the data and, you know, they are, ex uh, they are, you know, thinking that it should be, you know, up to the quality of experience, whatever they expecting, right? Uh, and we are just increasing the link capacity and we are thinking that it will be as per the quality of experience, but that's not the case. We need, you know, efficient utilization, which is very important. And, you know, and deal the network as a first class resource for particularly for the scientific workflows. So that's basically the uh, vision of our networking R&D here at Fermi Lab. So considering these, this vision, uh, we have some projects on we, which, on which we are working here at Fermi Lab. One of them is the SenseRusio architecture. Basically, this is the ESNet initiative but we are as a uscms we are the part of this uh, test page another is the noted architecture which is a sense uh you know the initiative but we are also we have also the test bed here at fermi lab and we are part of that collaboration and the third one which is our own initiative which is basically the ai best traffic classification and we are working with uh, in collaboration with the esnet 
before moving to these uh, to details of these projects, I would like to show you this. This is basically the core LSC network, uh, you know, the connectivity providers. Uh, we know that all the, you know, tier ones and tier zero is basically the sun and all the tier ones are connected using the LSC OPN network, which is a dedicated optical, you know, uh, network uh, for the tier ones means all the tier ones are connected with the LHC OPN. And if we talk about the worldwide tier twos connectivity, uh, all the tier twos are connected with the LHC one VRF by using the virtual routing forwarding mechanisms. And we also have some regional network like we have a uh, PERN in Pakistan and here in US, we have the ESnet six, which is a regional network provider internet two in Europe, we have Giant and other parts we have scenic also so these are the core lsc network providers but that's not enough as i said uh, we need more uh, to utilize these networks in an efficient way for that i said that we are working on the sensorio network architecture basically this is uh, the end to end uh, you know uh, sdn enabled network architecture this is create this Sense architecture is creating the overall network, end-to-end -end QS guaranteed network. It provides you, uh, you know, the flexibility of prioritize your workflows, scientific workflows as you want. It creates the overlay networks. It, you know, sense elevate your network to as a, you know, the first class resource means, uh, you know, we, we can automate, we can, you know, orchestrate the network as we want using the APIs. So it creates, you mean to say the end-to-end uh, you know, the connectivity with certain QS guaranteed path. Uh, so this is what the sense is. And this is the sense Rusio. Uh, basically, Rusio is the uh, data management software in scientific workflow and FTS is file transfer service. It's a, tra a, files, a file transfer service and extrude is also similar. So sense can provide, you know, interoperability among all these software stake uh, and interacting with all these software stacks whenever we need to create an end-to-end -end path, a QS guaranteed path, a prioritized path where we have to transfer the huge amount of data. In the right side, you can see for every flow, you will see the different uh, lines with the different colors. So it is creating a different uh, path, end-to-end -end QS guaranteed path using the uh, right side workflow where multiple, you know, the sense components are involved, sense orchestrators and network RM over the van and sense site RM, which is located at the sites. And this is basically the our test weight here at Fermilab, uh, where we have uh, storage nodes, we have the sense site RM uh, configured here locally, we have some data transfer node, we have some extrude D nodes are configured, and also uh, we have the our network connectivity, which is connecting via the ESnet. So uh, we are participating in this uh, architecture and uh, we are trying to explore uh, the possibility to evaluate the better ways to manage the CMS data transfer in, in a more efficient way. So main purpose of our this test bed is to, you know, um, evaluate the better ways to manage our CMS transfer that how our CMS is going to be CMS data is going to be transferred uh, uh, between the amongst the all the US CMS sites. Our collaborators are mainly the ESnet is leading this project, but we are working as a collaborator with them. Uh, USC, uh, US CMS, uh, all the US CMS sites are also part of this uh, collaboration as well. This is the topology of all US CMS sites where you can see uh, we are connected via the ESnet and uh, Fermi as a tier one and all the other sites like Purdue, U UNL, UCSD, Caltech, Vanderbilt. So all these are the US CMS tier two sites and we are trying to, uh, you know, transfer the data among all these sites and utilize the sense architecture uh, for this purpose. Uh, the next project that we are working on here at Fermi uh, also is a part of Fermi. It's basically the noted. It's network optimized transfer of experimental data. Basically, it's also SDN optimized uh, file transfer service, uh, but it is using the, you know, the logs of application and 
finding if there is a congestion in the path, then it creates an alternate path. Uh, you know, particularly it's working with the FTS software, as I discussed before, it's a file transfer service. So uh, Noted is working with the FTS, watching the logs of FTS. If there is a path, can, you know, the network congestion on this path, and then it create the alternate path, and then it shift the flows on that path, uh, on that alternate path. So we have the, some servers uh, here at the Fermi lab, which is a part of this noted test bed as well. Last time in SC23, we demonstrated the noted as well. Similarly, uh, since we demonstrated in SC23, DC24, and soon we are going to demonstrate in SC24 as well. Uh, this is how you know the noted is working. Uh, let's suppose we have the LSC1 LSC open path is a primary path from Fermi to Sun for data transfer. And if the path is going to be congested, then noted is monitoring the FTS and then it provision the sense path. And then once the sense path is created, it transfer the flow from the red one to the green one and your flow will be transferred and it will not be congested anymore. And our third, uh, you know, effort, which is uh, related to the AI based technique, we are trying to work on the traffic classification by using the ESNet high tech services. This, this is basically the new service which deployed by the ESNet at their end. Uh, you can see uh, this is the Fermi topology and HT is basically the high tech service that is deployed by ESNet and capturing all the packets, uh, all the CMS data here. Uh, all the science data, you can say not only CMS Dune and CMS both data are captured here at high touch and then it is going to be stored centrally in a database of the ESNet and uh, what it is doing basically it is, um, you know, providing the service of the flow deciliation means your all packets are captured but it summarized in a flow, small flows, we do not, you know, worry about the large and huge amount of storage requirements. And once we have these small flows, then we can, we will have, you know, microscopic services uh, through which we can, you know, uh, dynamically select the network flows and we can process it further for traffic analysis, for ML or deep learning related things, or some feature extraction, some classification, some traffic patterns, whatever you want, right? What we are using, uh, why we are using here at Fermi Lab, because if we talk about particularly for the CMS experiment, we have different sort of traffic of CMS, like streaming traffic that's generated through the XRoot D, and we have file transfer traffic that's generated through the FTS or XRoot D. Then we cannot distinguish in a naked eye. So we required, you know, the, some uh, services like. ESNet high touch services to capture and ca uh, summarize the flows. And then based on those summaries, we can analyze and predict that what is the requirement of the bandwidth for the streaming traffic, what is the requirement of the bandwidth for the file transfer traffic and other applications as well. So this is the purpose that we should have to classify the traffic based on the AI patterns. So uh, this is an initial stage right now. We are working with in collaboration with the ESNet and we are working on you know some uh, you know the uh, to train the models AI models uh, using some techniques like RNN or CNN, and then we can figure out that uh, we can predict that okay this amount of traffic might be required in future for streaming and this amount of uh, traffic and this amount of throughput required for the file transfer. So this is the main purpose of this project here at Fermi Lab, and finally I would like to uh, you know. Uh, as I said, that uh, we are moving to, into the terabits per second network. Fermi already upgraded our, you know, WAN connectivity with the help of ESNet. Uh, we are connected with the around 2.4 terabits per second. You can see in the red boxes, uh, we recently installed the Alistar router, which is the debuffer router and uh, support the 4 to 800G technology. And uh, we have a uh, link aggregation of the four by 400 and two by 400 uh, with, uh, you know, the at, at our border router. So this is the uh, connectivity uh, transition of the Fermi right now. But as I said before that 
just increasing the connectivity is not enough. We need to explore some technologies. We need some R&D in the network that how we can efficiently utilize these, you know, the links, link capacity in future. So that's what uh, we are working here at Fermi Lab. And that's all from my side today. Uh, thank you very much. And if you have any question, any comments, you're welcome. Thank you for your presentation. Uh, anybody question about that? A hey, very nice talk. Um, so uh, this is all very relevant. I mean, maybe we should actually have a longer conversation offline. But uh, one question that comes to my mind is, so in the noted, you said like you're going to monitor and then when there is a congestion, you're going to use sense. Why, why not use sense right from the beginning? Yeah, actually, uh, noted is not, uh, it's separate from the sense, right? It's totally separate, but it complements sometimes the sense as well. Let's suppose you have the LHC OPN path only from CERN to Fermi lab, right? We have OPN and you have separate LHC one path and tier one to tier one, you have, you are transferring from tier zero to tier one means CERN to Fermi lab. And there is some congestion is, you know, uh, noted by the noted and then it will create the path. It will shift to the LHC one again. We do not need sense for that, right? So if we have, but in the Fermi's case, we are, we 